tonight. We're pretty excited. We got our second race of the season coming up. And for that race, we got Mr. Elliot. Elliot's uh, on his fourth year here at the kennel, or fourth winter here at the kennel. And he's going to be doing the Copper Basin real soon here. So we're super excited about that. Taking a bunch of kind of what B slash C team dogs. Um, yeah. Some of the dogs are viable candidates for my race team, but most of them are ones that he's been working with all winter, kind of as the reserve gang and the developmental gang. So first of all, you're doing the Copper Basin 300. Yep, correct. So, That's correct. 300, as it implies. 300 miles. Yep. Um, how many races have you done so far? I have done one race. My first race last year was the Will 300. Mm -hmm. And a uh, majority of the dogs that I will be taking on the copper, I had also mush in the Will 300 when they were two years old. So it's nice to see the development now in another 300 mile race with them from two to three. So what, what's your goals, goal, goals on this race? What are you looking to accomplish? What is success for you on the Copper Basin 300? Success would look like, you know, having really good runs with the dogs, having, you know, everyone do their job very well as well including as you. <laughs> it's, it's including myself because you know only having done one 300 mile race I have still a lot to learn especially with the Copper Basin coming up so gaining more experience um, for myself uh, managing a dog team as well mm -hmm. as working as a team together out there so as far as placement are you looking where in the roster where in the roster let's go for say middle you know we're definitely not trying to push the dogs push myself um, towards the front of the pack, but you know somewhere like middle middle back would be mm -hmm. ideal and perfect um, for the uh, Myself as well as the dogs. What's your biggest? Um, I don't want to say fear But what is like what do you view as the big challenge that you're gonna be facing on this race for me? I would say obviously everyone talks about the hump um, the hump is notorious I guess for just large mountain climbs um, mm -hmm. up and over, you know certain section of trail um, for me, I've never really um, tackled such a large climb um, with the dog team. So it'd be very interesting to see how myself and the dogs handle that. I would say that is, you know, definitely something I've noted in the back of my mind, as well as doing, you know, just some serious river travel. It sounds like we're gonna have some serious river travel, you know, potentially encounter some overflow. And I wouldn't say that's necessarily as fearful as the hump, but definitely it's something that I've, you know, mentally, um, notebook and then all of that it looks like is going to be happening in probably pretty cold temperatures as well it was 47 below in Glen Allen yeah. at least that's what my phone said the other day it's supposed to be a little bit warmer than that but it's going to be chilly when you take off and that does add a huge element of challenge for a musher to manage a team on a race when it is cold so it'll be cold starting off yeah but it looks like by the time you're getting really tired the temperatures will yeah. be getting closer to zero so that's yeah. gonna be good it's a good situation the so last thing for you um who are the lead dogs that you're really focusing or relying on out there and what do they have to do to have an awesome race and what are their potential downfalls like so, what are you going to protect them from i guess it would be a way to, to view that yeah when we're looking at temps this cold you know definitely trying to you know protect all the skin mm -hmm. you know definitely keep frostbite from happening you know but we have tons of you know things in store for getting them dressed essentially for those kinds yep. of temperatures um as well as um keeping them mentally with driving forward the team especially later on the race definitely counting on flu and flounder and having yep. worked with those dogs since the day they were born and now yeah. you know we've kind of handed them off to you and yep. seen that they're pretty awesome lucky enough to get them now on the copper basin and for them i just gotta you know keep them happy and moving down the trail because we've seen what they can do in training series and yep. we know they've got it we just gotta for myself it's just you know keep them fed hydrated feet good and they'll do yeah. very well in a 300 mile race. So both of them are excellent, excellent athletes and uh, they're both only three years old. Yeah. And you have been very involved with their training every single winter of their life yep. <laughs> and summer. Yeah, and summer, yep. <laughs> so they were kind of been your project. Um, and of course, with those younger guys, attitude is the biggest thing. Being only three years old, they're more prone to those emotional ups and then they're driving really hard and then they might be a little more fatigued because they work too hard and then they have their little emotional valleys where the older dogs are just a little more steady all the time so that's gonna be one of the challenges particularly when it's cold absolutely with those a little bit younger dogs but hey good luck awesome thank you we're definitely gonna be watching them out there so yeah. this is the second race of the year for our kennel um elliot's gonna be one step closer to qualifying upon your successful completion of this race yep. and so we'll be watching close and looking at how the dogs are doing out there so make sure you come back and see how elliot's doing on this race awesome